Okay folks, so welcome to this very quick tutorial using Sequator to stack your Milky Way images. Um, if you don't have Sequator downloaded already, it's a PC software. There is an equivalent one for Mac, I'm not sure what it is, but I use PC, so just type in Sequator to Google, Google Sites, and you can download from here for free. Okay, so once you have Sequator open, um, you need to firstly add your Milky Way exposures. So what I do first is import the Lightroom, and then export them to a folder uh, as TIFF files into a folder on my desktop. Okay, so as you can see, I have them all here saved into Milky Way Brayhead folder. These are all TIFF files, their exposures for the Milky Way, and these are what I'm going to use to stack to basically reduce the noise, increase the detail in the Milky Way itself. So as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine exposures, totally ten. I did have ten, but I was forgotten to import one. Anyway, nine will do. So select them all, press enter. Okay, so now as you can see, just take note, this is the raw file. Um, shot at ISO 1600, f2.8, 25 seconds shutter speed. And the reason I use such low ISO is because I'm going to stack in the images. So that's the beauty of, use, of stacking them. You can use a lower ISO and you can afford to get less noise in your image. Okay, so once you've them imported, the next thing you do is double click your output and I'm just going to say this as final stacked shot. Okay, so that will be the final output file. Now we have to go down here to sky region. Okay, so leave, leave composition as is, that's fine. Sky region, full area. So what we have to do here is basically select the sky itself so that the software knows what to align. And basically, you don't want any of the foreground selected because oh, it's not the foreground that we're going to align, it's the stars, okay? So select sky region. You can, you can have a boundary line, a gradient, or a regular mask. I always use a regular mask so I can just paint in the sky. Boundary line works if you have a relatively clean horizon, which I do have here, but I still get better results with the regular mask. So I'm just right clicking, painting in sky region itself so as I get closer to my horizon I can make my brush up oh. so yeah if you right if you if you sorry if you right click you erase it left click your paint it in and make my brush smaller as you get closer to the horizon just paint that in there and if you've painted any bit of the foreground I think that mountain there just right click and paint it out okay Perfect, so once they're all selected, go down here to accumulation and then select freeze ground, okay? So now our foreground will be frozen. You have your sky region selected, your foreground is frozen, so this option down here. And that's it, you're ready. Um, all these options here, I never really use them or well, I do use auto brightness because it stops everything from getting blown out so click auto brightness to on and then you're ready to go so very quickly just to recap on that first text section here go down align stars and select freeze ground next step sky region paint in the sky part of your Milky Way okay using the irregular mask here auto brightness Double click to add that on, it prevents everything from getting blown out. The rest of the options I don't use, I've never used them. You can experiment if you want. And then just click start. Depending on how fast your PC is or how many images are stacking, it should only take a couple of seconds, like generally 10 to 15 seconds. And we should get a decent, decent image when it's finished. So, and there you go. There is your stacked final image of the Milky Way. As I said, it reduces noise. You can use lower ISO and enhance the detail in the image itself. And you can go on and then process it afterwards. So yeah, that's a very quick little tutorial there if you asked for on uh, using the Okay, so thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.